go. Who the hell are you, man? Genius billionaire playboy from my We are the knight! Uh-huh. Knight! <laughs> On to your butt. And now for something completely different. Hey, hello out there, and welcome to the Night's Nerditude Podcast, podcast for all things nerd. I am your host tonight, Sean, and I'm here joined on the Skype hotline with... Andrew Garfield is a fucking liar. It's Sam. I'm also ready to kill, save, and avenge. Uh, it's John. Yes. So, all right. So we have a, a pretty big show, but someone's missing. Sam, where's Chris? Uh, he got drawn into a universe where everyone knows uh, Chris Wilcock. Ah. Uh, yeah. That's, yeah. That sucks. Poor him. The, the reverse of what happened in the movie we are about to review. Except, which except is, he's he's not a crime fighter, so everyone's just talking about the expanse. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Salad, our uh, our year in review episode will be next week, by the way. <laughs> uh, looking forward to that. Um Sean, we got a bunch of trailers though. We do before we get into Spider Man No Way Home, we have some trailers. Uh, the first one comes from uh, Robert Eggers, who did The Vich, or The Witch, or however you want to pronounce it. I like saying The Vich. Um, he also did a con favorite minus Chris, uh, The Lighthouse, because Chris has yet to actually watch that movie, and I kind of want him to, kind of don't. Um, yeah, yeah. But uh, it is called The Northman, or Northman. Um yeah, so it, it comes out next this upcoming April, April twenty uh, second. Uh, it's Robert Eggers' third film after you know two basically home runs, I guess you would say. Like the, the two really good movies. So I have no reason to think that this is going to be bad. It's got a great mm-hmm. cast minus the lead, who uh, is the only thing that. Makes me nervous. You don't like Skarsgård? Uh, Alexander Skarsgård has done a crappy Tarzan movie and Mute. Oh, yeah. I forget we did hey, that. Hey, one. Hey, yeah. hey, he also did uh, Battleship. All right. Oh, yep. And yeah, Battleship. And Battleship. So uh, that. not the best Regret- track record. Yeah, regretfully, his casting on the big screen has not been... Um, a good showcase for his true talents, right. um, which I do feel are very much there. John, you're, I'm guessing you haven't seen a lot of Generation Kill. No. Which actually, for a war movie, I feel like you would really enjoy. Oh, man. He is it's, in Generation Kill. <laughs> yeah, like the main guy. Just My head never put those two together. Oh, wait. Damien Lewis is in Band of Brothers? I had no idea. <laughs> Who does he play? Um... Yeah, so I would check that out. But getting back to our Viking um, Hamlet uh, revenge, yes, um, this movie looks insane. Dude. Oh, I like, like, like you know, the one thing with with him is you know the the witch, which I shockingly still not seen, which I will have to absolutely oh, yeah. have to see yeah, that as do. well as rewatch the lighthouse. Um, but definitely two smaller productions. Um, you know, mm. this one is finally getting, you know, this, I'm sure it's not, like, an incredible budget, but, like, clearly it's got some money behind it. Yeah. And it just looks like they, it they gets... They were able to hire a third actor. <laughs> yeah, right? Yeah. And it, and it looks like it just gets super freaking weird. <laughs> and, like, oh, boy. Yeah, like, I have somewhat mixed feelings about this, because, like, watching it, I was just like, wait, so he's just going to make an action movie? Like, is that, is that what he's going to do? And then the trailer kind of towards the end starts getting really weird. Yeah. <laughs> I'm like, like you see like a Valkyrie and it's what? like, <laughs> yeah. I mean, Sam, how likely would you say that actually this movie's super weird and like all the action scenes are in the trailer? Uh, to be honest, hopefully that's true. Cause I, I love this guy 
for other reasons, not like he does action well. Then again, mm. I've never but seen him do action, so. Right, but don't you think this, I don't know, I feel like this kind of um, genre, subgenre, or whatever you want to call it, it's a little, like, underserved. Like, we don't have those, like, Paul Verhoeven, like, weird Total Recall movies anymore. Mm. Like, old, you know, 80s Total, 90s Total Recall. Mm. Um, which, I mean, I think this is probably not exactly a good comparison <laughs> to, but we don't get, like, weird action movies so much anymore, mm. and or, like, you know... I I'm just very it 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 tickled a lot of my uh I'm, tickled a lot I'm of I'm like uh, all over the place on this cuz I'm like partially I'm really excited and then also I'm just like seems a little dumb when he caught the javelin. <laughs> Did it though? <laughs> uh, if by dumb you mean like freaking awesome <laughs> like Yeah, but like I don't know, I don't I don't expect that from one of these movies. Or at least a weird movie like this. I don't know. I think we might be, like, over, like, putting, like, what the lighthouse was on, like, everything this guy's ever going to make. Yeah. Which, yeah. you know, fair enough. Like, somebody is whoever they are the first time you meet them. They're sort of somewhat locked in place. But, um, yeah, man. I don't know. I'll- John, how, um, as someone who's seen The Witch... <laughs> Well, Sam, haven't you seen The Witch? I have not. I just, just you have not seen The Witch? Yeah. We should do a Con oh Classic for The Witch. Yeah. I mean, we... I've I listened we already... to the soundtrack enough. <laughs> okay. Yeah, I know. That's why I was very surprised that you haven't seen The Witch. Um, well, first of all, I was going to say, the one thing that should uh, make you guys feel okay with this movie is, name me a bad movie that has Bjork in it. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> True. You know? um, yeah. yeah. Was so, she in like yeah. a Muppet movie or something? <laughs> no, she do- hasn't done anything. I, I don't mean, know. Maybe it's because she has a Muppet name. Like yeah, Bjork, Bjork, Bjork. Um, yeah. I mean, I just look at it as like you know, love Anya Taylor Joy, Nicole Kidman, and Ethan Hawke just in this. Mm. You know, <laughs> Ethan Hawke like is just in this to like die twenty minutes in. Um, <laughs> I mean, you know, that's a whole setup. Not really a spoiler. Yeah. Um, you know, you got your boy Fjolnir in here. Um, <laughs> outside of that, I, you know, dude, I, I, I couldn't possibly be more all in. Yeah. So oh, I'm, same. I'm very excited. Same. Very, very excited for this movie. I'm in. I'm in. Just like a little off kilter, I guess. I just wasn't watch, expecting this. <laughs> watch the witch, Sam. Just yeah. watch the witch. Yeah. All right. Uh, any final thoughts on the North Man? Um, no, just oh my god, I can't wait. <laughs> I know it, April, it's... it can't come here soon enough. April, I so far at the beginning of next year, between video games and um and movies, it's starting to look pretty good. Um, mm. which uh, uh, you know what? Speaking of video games, uh. A trailer came out for a video game. Well, a bunch of video games last week. But the one I wanted to focus on here was this game that came, that's coming out by uh, Quantic Dream. Uh, they did uh, Detroit Becoming Human. They did Heavy Rain. Um, they are doing a Star Wars game called Star Wars Eclipse. Uh, so they dropped the cinematic trailer, which doesn't show any gameplay, but it just shows you what's happening. And the, uh, the gist of what you get in this is that this game takes place during the High Republic. Um, so just maybe just before episode one, um, where the Jedi, you know, were very popular. Um, <laughs> but, uh, yeah, this, uh. This trailer, guys. Uh, I want to see this movie. <laughs> <laughs> so, what... Yeah, no, I, I mean, I, I couldn't agree with you more, yeah. Sean. Like, I was... Like, this is exactly what I've wanted to see from Star Wars for, like, maybe 20 years now. Mm-hmm. Um, it could not possibly be more, like, my vision of, like, what the cool Star Wars world looks like, which I feel like the closest thing we've ever seen on screen is like Mando and maybe to some extent Rogue One at times. Mm-hmm. But um, 
This looks so cool. So can you just to take a step back? The other games this company has done. Yes. What? How would you describe them? Are they like open world sandboxes? I'm so like washed and out of it on the game scene now. So um, th- those games are uh, like one way to describe them is like interactive movies. Yeah, I I know okay. Heavy Rain is uh, definitely that way. I wasn't sure if Detroit yeah, becoming Detroit, a human was like that. Human is the same. Way. An interactive movie, uh, choose your own adventure kind of game. Yeah. Um, okay. Yeah. Or it's so heavy on the cinematic. narrative, less heavy on the gameplay. <laughs> right. Mm-hmm. So, I mean, I would take that. I yeah. I'm not opposed to it, especially the way it. Um, looks and everything, mm-hmm. um, you know. Of course, you know who wouldn't want to have like, uh, like super flushed out, like you know, Red Dead type, you know, sandbox Grand Theft Auto game in Star Wars land. That's like also an RPG, but you know, <laughs> come on, I mean, oh, we're probably getting a little over our skis there. But um, no, a very like it looks so cool. It's like very it's, um, good trailer. Problem is like. I have no idea what this game is. Mm. Like, it'd be interesting to see the gameplay trailer. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, Did it also like watching it be like, oh, these guys watch Dune too? <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah. Even though, like, obviously they didn't. I mean, obviously one is you know very influential on the other, but like, just a lot of things. And this was even before the ending of the guy like emerging from the black goo. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I was like, oh, this cinches, it, this clenches it now. But like, even before, I was like, oh man, there's a lot of Dune vibes here. Yeah. Oh yeah, definitely. Um, but I mean, just we need a good Star Wars game. Um, that's the biggest problem. And luckily, this has nothing to do with EA, yeah. uh, which you know has shown that they are incapable of handling the Star Wars property. Um, Right, with I guess were there other, were there ever good Star Wars games or were we just teenagers? Kotor, Kotor, Battlefront Two, Battlefront, even bat, like to a lesser extent, Battlefront One. Yeah, uh, Shadows of the Empire was great. That's an all time classic. Um, Star Wars Pod Racer. Uh, <laughs> actually, I love that game. I but. I actually have it on my PC. Um, I'm off. They have it on Steam, and oh, it's do great. They? Yes, they do. Wait, wait oh for uh, Star Wars games go on sale all the time on Steam. So wait till they go on sale. You can get like all the Star Wars games, like the X Wing versus uh, Tie Fighter games, both Kotor's Battlefront One and Two, not the EA ones. Um, Shadows of the Empire is on there. Uh, Galactic Battlegrounds is on there, which I know you like, John. Uh, I already, already have bought and have never played. Oh, okay. Because um, I just, I don't know, felt like the need to get it. Uh, and, um, I mean, like, I played it when it was originally out. Yeah, I, I know, John. I know. Same deal. I have it. I haven't played yeah, it yet. Yeah. <laughs> um, but, uh, we, should, we should do a co-op sometime when uh, I buy a real computer. The, uh, <laughs> um, the, the clo- What's the clone game um, where you play as a squad? Oh, uh, like, Republic, like uh, Rogue squad Republic Commandos. Republic Commandos, that's it. Yeah, that and was... yes, Ro- I believe Rogue Squadron is also. And the uh, uh, Jedi Outcast game. Uh, oh, Kyle Katan. Yeah, so like all those games are on Steam, but they, they bundle them all together. So if you get it at the right time, they'll be like, 25 bucks, they're all yours. It's like the best deal ever. Such a nostalgic uh, thing. Like, because I played Rebel Assault 2, which I used to have on like my Windows 95 PC a long time ago. And... Uh, yeah, I still get PTSD from playing that game, and I tried playing it again recently, and I still get PTSD from the like, uh, Millennium Falcon. Like, thinking <laughs> back, maybe, like, I have to play again just to see, but, like, thinking back, that game was broken. <laughs> like, yeah. It was Sa- all over, the like, especially those chase scenes. Sa- Sam, I have replayed it recently. I have played the Millennium Falcon p- bit where you're trying to escape fr- through the tunnels. Yeah. Remember as a kid how you had no control over it? Like you're bouncing off of everything? Yeah. yeah. Now that I'm an adult and I have better hand-eye coordination and, you know, better, I, I can function better, I'm just as bad. It's awful. 
I'm like, dead. Yeah, it's just broken. <laughs> yeah, no, it is the hardest thing I've ever done. Um, that is sick. They're just all here. Yeah. Everything's on there. It's great. Plus, if any of them had, like, DLC, they're added in. All right. Well, we've we've talked <laughs> yes. about Star Wars enough, but no, I'm I'm very excited though. I, a part of me is like just even seeing it and the look of it of like I hope this game is successful yes. and it influences the movies because like clearly they need somebody to push them in a certain direction. Yeah. Right? Um, really quick too, going off of Star Wars games. Uh, did either of you guys know that Kotor is being uh, remade? Yes. Yeah. yeah. It was originally announced as coming out for just PlayStation, but then they're like, "Yeah, like a month later, we're going to release it on Xbox and PC." So it's all, yeah. so it's not even Very exclusive nice. anymore. So everyone can play. Hey, not on the Switch. Boom. That's true. <laughs> Last time I played it was on an iPad. So um, uh, I have it on my phone. Uh, <laughs> I think I might too. I don't know if there's yeah. a cross. It's like two bucks on uh, on like Google. Like the Google Play Store, so it's like, yes, please. You should just play it now. I'm gonna play it now. <laughs> All right. <laughs> I like how we we started this conversation with. Did, have they ever made a good Star Wars game? Too. I'm just gonna play Kotor while you guys talk. Uh, I mean, that was like kind of you know like Devil's Advocate. <laughs> like to be fair though, the amount of Star Wars games compared to the amount of like actual good Star oh, Wars yeah. games, oh, yeah. yeah, is is pretty pretty low yeah. but there have been some gems, yeah if you, no if you make 200 it. games you know five of them should be good yeah. <laughs> yeah anyways moving on uh to a little movie little tiny movie coming out next when is this one coming out a- uh april 22nd um wow wait what same day Sa- what, same what day as the, the north day the unbelievable weight of massive talent, starring a, wh- yeah, starring Nicolas Cage as Nicolas Cage. Which this is going to be an incredible uh, double feature. <laughs> yes, <laughs> I a hundred percent. So I guess we're already. Uh, I know yeah. how you feel, John. You, you're in on this movie. Um, I'm pretty in my only sort of cautious sort of uh just you know caution to this whole thing is just that i feel like a lot of times these like high concept comedies have an incredible trailer in a very okay movie okay I, i can see that like you don't regret seeing it but it's like okay this could have been bad sort of deal. Yeah. It's like like, right. like you, you have this vision in your head on what it's going to be, and it just doesn't reach that. Because, like, it's Nicolas Cage, so it could be off the walls hysterical of just him overacting. Mm. Um, but, but I loved what I saw. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Uh, especially the uh, Nick Cage freakout scene and, like, of it, them climbing the wall. It ticks a little uh, niche box for me of movies with insanely long titles that kind of don't make sense. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Um, yeah, it's a very like French New Wave kind of uh, title to it. <laughs> we also need to see in, in review at some point uh, Pig. Yes, I've seen. Yes, um, uh, I I will watch Pig. It's on Hulu. Maybe. Um, we'll, yeah, we'll we'll see. Uh, definitely see. I, I we'll see if I can watch it this weekend, at some point. All right. Um, yeah, if we're talking the next week, I'll watch it. All right. Good Christmas Eve movie. <laughs> well, no, uh-huh. Christmas Eve is is set aside for um, Muppet Christmas Carol because after all, there's only one more sleep till Christmas. You can watch both. I, I probably will. <laughs> Anyways, uh, so yeah, this this movie, it's Nick Cage accepts a $1 million offer to go to his super fan's birthday party, but he he's going as a, an, an FBI informant because... The, Does it, see, it doesn't actually actually have any of that in the trailer, yeah, though. Right, Am I crazy? right. Yeah, no, no never you're not crazy. The okay. But like... Part. I know that's probably the synopsis, which... Yeah, no, I so just reading the synopsis for this movie, it's just as insane as just watching mm-hmm. the trailer, like, what you would think it... So, like I said, so he accepts that. 
he goes to um, so he he goes to the guy's birthday party as an informant, but he also gets cast in a Quentin Tarantino film. And Quentin Tarantino is supposed to be making a cameo in this movie. So, I don't know, guys. This might be insane. <laughs> it could be. I'm trying to look at, let's see, who's the guy who wrote it? Uh, written by uh, Tom Gormican. Gorm. Mm. Yeah, Tom. I'm not seeing... I know he... I'm not seeing a promising filmography. Right. Well, what is on his filmography? Uh, filmography. Um, that The movie That Awkward Moment. Okay. Which actually kind of has an incredible cast. Um, but, you know, all of the show Ghosted, which... Oh, yeah, that one. Is on Hulu. I don't know if it was ever a network show or not. I think it might have been on Fox. Mm. That's it. I, you know, I mean, like I said, I like what I saw, but I, I just have a feeling. I, I feel like with these things, the trailer is like a nine out of ten, and the movie's like a six out of ten. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I just, I've been, I've been burned too many times. I'll go see it, but I, I'll, I shouldn't say that. I'm definitely, I'm definitely in. If the reviews are really bad, oh yeah, oh, yeah. then I'm probably no. like, yeah, Hulu. Yeah. <laughs> oh yeah. Which, Catch you on Hulu. Yeah, it, it'll definitely be on Hulu at some point. But yeah, no, I agree. Um, it, which is sad that I've I've gotten to that point. And I've, we've talked about it on the past on the podcast that like, yeah, reviews will keep me away from movies. I mean, it's well if you're like borderline. Yeah. yeah. Plus, you know, it's a Nick Cage movie. You never know with these things. <laughs> yeah, mm-hmm. it could be all over the place. Could be, you know great or it could be awful we don't know there's no in between but even like no yeah. no there isn't well i don't know go see pig that's all i'll say um all right any uh, final thoughts on the unbearable weight of massive talent nope no yeah. sam yeah no no none really here Part of me kind of wants to pull a, uh, a wild card and be like hey guys what'd you guys think of the sonic 2 trailer yeah, can we talk? Well, I have a whole spiel on the yeah, trailer. Go ahead, go yeah, ahead. fuck it, I'll do it now. Yeah. So, you know, I'm sitting there in the movie theater last night when we were watching Spider Man. And, or no, two yeah. nights ago. Mm-hmm. Last night. Yeah, two nights ago. <laughs> <laughs> I know this matters on a fucking podcast when you listen to it, whatever. <laughs> but, I'm sitting there in the movie theater with uh, the, these two guys, and I'm like. You know, I talk a lot about, like, there's no good, like, IP-free movies these days. Like, total, like, original ideas. <laughs> and then we get the trailer for Moonfall, which is one. And it's, you know... A, a Roland if, if Emmerich. Unfamiliar, yes, it's Roland Emmerich, you know, uh, Independence Day. Well, I say Independence Day. That's, the, like, the best one. And since then, it's been a long... 20, oh, what was it? 2012... Um, uh, San day, af- day after, day after, after tomorrow. tomorrow is not bad. Yeah, you know, total, you know, nuclear, well, or, you know, forgetting Star apocalypse Day. movies. Yep. <laughs> oh yeah, that's right. It's the first big one. Maybe. Um, but yeah, so that's is one of his movies. That, oh man, it looks so shitty. <laughs> like it looks. I mean, God love him. You know, Patrick Wilson, you're a good actor, but like, if Patrick Wilson's the lead in the movie, you just know. Oh yeah, yeah. Like you just it's yeah. unless he's calling he, he's a good, not ready for prime time. Unless he's, he's good as himself, an assistant, uh, like Ocean Master. I'm Ocean out. Master, <laughs> right? <laughs> and then and then but then you know I have that feeling, and then we co- the next one is Sonic Two, and I just realize there's no future and there's no God, <laughs> and I just want to. <laughs> I you know so, why why bother? I'm assuming I'm the only one here who has seen Sonic the Hedgehog one. Yeah. You would be correct. All right, um, it's actually a pretty good movie. I I hate saying that um, because it has no right to be a good movie, but it is hands down the best video game movie of all time. Like nothing compares to it. Like it's legit a good movie. I don't want to say that. I wish I wasn't saying that. Listen, I, Sean, I shouldn't be like you said what? the th- same thing about trolls, and I still refuse to believe that. <laughs> 
Remember, Sam, both of these movies got sequels. Yeah, yeah, I know. <laughs> but then again, so did The Boss Baby, so. Uh. <laughs> Which, uh, uh. F- funny story, Boss Baby's uh, music done by Hans Zimmer. God damn it. <laughs> He's prolific. He's prolific. He is yeah. very prolific. But, that, like, he was on the toilet one day and was like, I got the whole soundtrack. Boom. <laughs> I got the Here Boss go. Baby soundtrack. They should make, like, Boss Baby 4, Glenn Gary, Glenn Boss Baby. <laughs> <laughs> oh, That's going to be a Peacock original, and it's going gonna, it's gonna to be Alec Baldwin dropping off bombs. <laughs> oh, God. Um, yeah, so uh, I'm probably the only one here who's actually excited for Sonic 2. Sonic the Hedgehog 2 being my fi- one of my favorite video games of all time. Um, so I'm actually ex- I'm actually excited for this movie, and I don't know why. What about Sonic lore intrigues you the most when it comes to this movie? Is it the Im- introduction of, what was his name, Punches? Knuckles. 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 Why did I know that? <laughs> because he's, he's a main character in Sonic, Sam. Come on. You've played the games. I'm assuming. Yeah, it was a, it was a kid. I <laughs> played it. Yeah, it was. It was Sonic. Uh, was it Sonic and Knuckles? Is uh, the third one or fourth one? Third one. Anyways, uh, no, like I don't know. I've I seriously like Sonic the Hedgehog two is probably my top five favorite video games of all time. Like I love Sonic the Hedgehog two. Uh, like I own it. You know, going back uh, to how, go, how games you have on your phone, you have I have it on my phone. Movie, uh, stays true to uh, <laughs> Sonic the Hedgehog 2 lore. Um, as long as there's no bit in this game where Sonic is underwater and then all of a sudden that music starts playing because that'll give me such anxiety um, because that is the worst part of that game. Uh, so let's hope that doesn't happen. Uh, but yeah, uh, Sonic lore, like outside of, I know there's stuff that outside of the first like four games, I don't care. Like it, to me, it's a, it's a, I guess you would say 3d side scroller where you just kill a bunch of robots and the baby animals hop out of them. Well, that's all it needs to be. And like the fact that they were able to give it a plot in the first one, I like Bravo. Like, I if you remember back to when the the first one like trailer dropped like Sonic looked terrifying. He was like out of a nightmare cuz they made him human like. And the internet yelled at the the uh, creators and so the VX, VFX team went in fixed him made him more look more like the game and somehow that actually made a good movie. Like it worked. The internet was right for once. Like this is weird. Do you think that had an impact on the actual movie, though? It just, like, didn't look stupid or weird or whatever? Well, I mean, like, the plot is fine. It's just, it's very distracting to see that, like, humanoid hedgehog thing. Oh, for sure. Oh, yeah. I mean, that would have ruined, I guess, in some ways, the same. You're right. Yeah. Um, Hey, just some... (laughs) So just mindlessly scrolling IMDb, Mm -hmm. Nick Cage's next movie, the director of it... Only has a picture, but has no blurb at all for, like, a description on uh, IMDb. <laughs> like, it's very jarring. Like, it's just a picture in a black screen. <laughs> <laughs> and it's... <laughs> this is a movie that has Ernie Hudson, Ron Perlman, Jackie Earl Healy, Rick Fox, the basketball player. <laughs> um, anyway. Right. One more trailer. One more trailer. Um, which... We were sort of debating, do we talk about now, do we talk about later, as it was released um, or included with the end of uh, Spider-Man No Way Home, that is Doctor Strange Multiverse of Madness? In the Multiverse of Madness. Okay. Gotta include the in part. (laughs) Um, And frankly, to be honest with you, I have absolutely nothing to add to this trailer. Uh we knew that going in that this was a Sam Raimi movie, mm. so he's you know he did the D- Evil Dead movies, so he knows mm-hmm. horror um, and uh, Spider Man. He did the, sp- so the first three first, Spider-Man. first three Spider Man movies uh, and parted ways with Sony in negative ways. He also did for the love of the game, which was very odd. <laughs> uh, 
<laughs> that classic what, movie now, that everyone knows now that, about. Now that I know he's done it, that's the only thing I will ever remember Sam Raimi from. Because I had to sit there and watch Kevin Costner pretend to be a pitcher for the Detroit Tigers go through the story of his life while pitching a perfect game. God, that movie sucked. Uh, <laughs> yeah, so I like you see Wanda, you see Doctor Strange. Um, Baron was it Mordo comes back. Now he's got longer hair. Um, I think part of the problem is is I totally forget everything that happened in Doctor Strange, which you have every right to do because it is a forgettable movie. Mm. Like, I just remember like, Tilda remember, Swinton yeah. is, like, this weird being that people were pissed that she wasn't Asian. Yeah, the ancient one. Uh, remember how Rachel McAdams is in it? Right, exactly. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so the one thing I can take away from this trailer, because I'm the only one who decided to continue with What If, um, there is an episode of What If Doctor Strange lost his heart instead of his hands. So if you remember from Doctor Strange... He mangles his hands, can yep. no longer perform surgery, so he dives into magic and whatnot. Um, whereas in the What If, Rachel McAdams' character dies, and he uses the Time Stone to go back to that moment and try fixing it over and over and over again, and he can never save her life. And so he realizes that he can do it if he consumes like all the like ancient beasts... Um, and just like summons each one and consumes them all and essentially becomes like an immortal being, but also like a demonic mortal being who, after he saves Rachel McAdams, life, he's able to do that. His entire reality shatters around him and the, he is contained in like a little gemstone thing. And that's all that or prism, which is a prison. Um, which is all that contains left of his universe, which is basically himself. And if you watch this trailer, there's the whole, the only, like, thing you should, like, like was it the, the biggest enemy to, to the, the multiverse there, is you. Is you, and it shows an evil Doctor Strange. Uh, there's a lot of people believing that this is the tie-in from What If. Oh, okay. So, and you see... Uh, in the town, there's that squid thing with the giant eye. That's Shuma Gorath, um, who is an ancient one, who is ruler of many dimensions, um, and one of, in the comics, Doctor Strange's like mortal enemies. Uh, and he's also on our brand new logo that, uh, that was created. He is the tentacles. Oh. That is Shuma Gorath. Wow. Um, Small world. Yeah, right? It's, I, you shouldn't have said that, though, because I wouldn't get sued. <laughs> you, yeah. You, well, he was the inspiration. Uh, anyways. Yeah, inspiration. Yeah. We, we just added tentacles, not, not those tentacles. Anyway, um, yeah. You know, I'll go see it. Yeah. I, uh, I hated the first one. Uh, Benedict has grown on me as Doctor Strange in all these, like, bit roles in... You know, the Avengers movies in um, uh, the Th uh, Thor 3 um, in, you know, Ragnarok. And, I mean, I hate to say it, but once again in Spider-Man. Like, I'm liking him as a small role and yes. mm, kind of forgetting that he's, a like, supposed to have a main role in a movie. So we'll see how this one is. Uh, I'm still very cautious. Yeah, yeah, I think he's. It's definitely going to be bettered by the fact that you're splitting time with Scarlet Witch, who mm -hmm. I do think is an interesting character, or has now become an interesting character. <laughs> yeah. Whereas before was like literally had nothing. Like I mean, you know, very important show to have WandaVision because otherwise you really wouldn't give a shit at all about Wanda because just, I don't know, just incredibly one dimensional. But now that we've gone through that. Um, I think there'll be something to actually kind of, like, rest and, like, be a foundation. And, like, Sean, I, I think you're absolutely right. I think Doctor Strange, especially the way Cumberbatch plays him, he's a good weirdo in a room. But, like, I don't think he can, like, carry a movie on his own. Yeah, mm. yeah I'm, I'm just in the same boat as you guys. It's like, I mean, it looks tempting, but there's also just nothing there that jumped out at me. That, like, ooh, yeah, that. 
I mean, I was happy that Shumagorath showed up. I mean, like that was my favorite like part. The only thing was <laughs> when Bizarro Strange shows up, and I was like, "All right, right, that's a thing." We haven't. <laughs> he should have been. No, we really shaven. haven't done this before. He should have been clean shaven. Yeah, realistically. Yeah, old Star Trek yeah. style. Yeah. So like reverse of Star Trek. So you'd be like, "But the good one has the goatee." Like this he time. just has the sideburns. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right, well, I guess it's time to meander into uh, Spider-Man No Way Home. Spidey. Sam, yeah. would you like to give our uh, give the review sort of overview kind of thing? All right, uh, so Spider-Man No Way Home is the third installment of the Tom Holland saga. Uh, I never do these, so I never know what to do. I know, I <laughs> wanted to see what it was like. <laughs> Like, you caught me off guard, and I'm like, oh, crap, I have to do this. Uh, but What do you need, Sam? Uh, <laughs> I got all the information in front of me. Well, why don't you do it? <laughs> well, because you're the Spider-Man fan. I know, that too. I'll just swing it on over to you. Huh? Ah, fuck. Uh. <laughs> all right, so starring, uh, first of all, directed by John Watts, um, uh, but starring... Tom Holland, obviously, Zendaya, Benedict Cumberbatch, um, John Favreau. We were shown in the trailers that Jamie Foxx, William Defoe, Alfred Molina, Benedict Wong were all in this, and of course, Marissa Tomei. Um, and so that, I don't know about you guys, but I went into this as spoiler free as possible. Yeah, me too. What I, I, all right, I like, kind of all I knew was from the trailers. Yeah, like I that's all I accepted because there were so many fan theories going around out there about what could happen, what couldn't happen. That I was just, just like, I put the blinders on, and like, if it was a Spider-Man article on Yahoo, let's say, I ignored it. I didn't, I wanted nothing to do with it. I just went in. Just was like, this is Spider Man versus, you know, from what I've seen, Electro, uh, the Green Goblin, and Doc Ock. And then, like, maybe Sandman looked like Sandman was in the trailers. Not sure. Uh, Mm -hmm. Looked like maybe Lizard is going to be in this movie. Not quite sure. Uh, So, I mean, his head turned. (laughs) Yeah. And this was for for spoilers. You know, I feel like this is the first thing in a while where it was like, "Don't go on the internet." Mm-hmm. You know, like steer clear. So, like, there hasn't been that kind of big, like, yeah. you know, not even necessarily Marvel or whatever, like just pop culture. Like there hasn't been that big reveal, sort of right. like everyone's watching it. So you know? for, before we go any further, I want to state spoilers ahead. If you haven't seen this, turn it off. Spoilers ahead. First of all, we've had we had in this movie there are four uh, quote unquote surprise cameos. I will go in order. The first one is Spider Man's lawyer is Charlie Cox. <laughs> Holy crap. as Daredevil, he's Daredevil. Yes. Yeah, the yeah. actor is Charlie. He's got the Charlie red glasses. Cox is the actor. <laughs> he's blind. He yes. <laughs> And he catches That would have been funny if he was like somebody else and like trying to be like, <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> that was one where, okay, here's kind of like my evolving theory for the MCU. Mm-hmm. I like, like, okay, Charlie Cox being in this is totally useless, but also very cool. Yeah. Yes. Like, like, there's really no reason for him to be it, but I like that we can do this. Mm-hmm. Like, you know, I like that it's that there's this sort of like amorphous world around it. It's not just like, okay, here's a Spider Man movie with like Spider Man things. You know, yeah. it's like, oh, yeah, well, yeah, of course he yeah, would show up. Right. I mean, he's a lawyer and Spider Man needs to They a have lawyer. enough characters now right. where like they can just, you know, elbow into other movies and TV shows and stuff. Right. And I mean, right. this and, is the first time they've elbowed into the TV shows. Yeah. Which is great. Well, the Netflix one. Well, the the yeah. right the the pre yeah. yeah the ones that weren't quite sure if they exist in this universe or not because of the deals that were placed and how Marvel kind of has ignored them and 
and canceled them and been like, yeah, we're done with them. We want nothing to do with them. Right. Now they so do. now it's going to be really weird that uh, Mahershal is Blade, considering he's <laughs> uh, Cotton. Yeah. Right? Mm. Anyway, um, what what other surprise cameos? Uh, so then the next two, uh, which are huge, is uh, Andrew Garfield and Tobey Maguire show up. Who are they? <laughs> uh, Peter Parker and Peter Parker. I mean... <laughs> You say surprise cameo. So I say surprise cameo because, as Sam stated to open this podcast, uh, Andrew Garfield lied. (laughs) He's a liar. Oh, no. (laughs) He lied? But then again, so is Charlie Cox. What? He lied? Which is is fine. I'm happy he lied because, like, so (laughs) when we first saw Charlie Cox in this, there was a collective gasp in the movie theater. Of people going, oh, like, that's awesome. When Andrew Garfield showed up, which I realized it was Andrew Garfield the second I saw him turn and face the the camera from, like, a distance. The eyes. The eyes. I was like, that's Andrew Garfield. Oh, my God, that's Andrew Garfield. And then he, like, shows up, takes the mask off, and, like, everybody's losing it in the the area. And then then Tobey Maguire shows up, and it's just like... The crowd was just like ready to stand up and just start clapping. Like it, like you could feel the energy in the crowd at that point, and how happy everybody was. It was, oh, I, I've, like you've said, John, like the fact that they are able to do this now because the MCU has gotten so big. Like it's amazing that they were actually able to do something like this, where they were able to pull in three franchises that have nothing to do with each other other than the main character and put them all in one movie it's it was huge it, it's like yeah. it's like watching um days of future past where it connects right. the two x-men but like this is on a bigger scale like be, the the thing that people if you don't like marvel if you don't like superhero movies or comic books or anything the one thing you have to take away about all of it is there realistically is two superheroes that everyone loves Batman and Spider-Man outside of that you pick and choose everyone these are the two characters with the biggest fan bases everyone I mean I think Superman has some cachet but like just doesn't as like a story just never really works no like everybody knows Superman but like few people are fans of Superman yeah, the the problem with Superman is he has no character flaws, and that's what makes him unrelatable. Right. So it's all the the stories around him that make him a good character, but you know, like everyone loves Batman, everyone loves Spider Man. Mm. Like, I mean, Sean, too. Like, to me, this movie even goes a step further. I mean, we're starting to get to this sort of like um, flushed out world where, like, you know, Doctor Strange. You know, mm-hmm. a major character. I mean, Benedict Cumberbatch is, you know, a big actor. He's not a massive star, but he's just still a big actor. Um, you know, shows up in all these movies, plays, like, in this one, a pretty good-sized mm-hmm. part. Mm-hmm. Um, but then on top of that, we have now um, decided, oh, we're just going to F around with the multiverse um, from here on out, or at the very least for the foreseeable future, it seems. Yeah. And just the world of possibilities this opens is just very um, appetizing in my mind. Yeah. Like, I look at this, I'm starting to, like, come back around to being, like, actually the only good Marvel movies. <laughs> I shouldn't say that. The best Marvel movies are the ones that are big and full of spectacle. And they seem to struggle more when they go to the more, like, weirder kind of niche movies. Like, uh, I don't think Shang-Chi was bad, but, like, I don't think it was as strong as this. Because, you know, this is, it's like, like, we're seeing everything, like, bump into each other. And that's cool. Like, that very much, to me, invokes the sort of, like, you know, crossover appeal that these sort of stories have. Like, as a kid, that's all you can think about is, like oh, what if this Spider-Man shows up and fights Batman or something? Like, you know, not that that's ever going to happen now, but that sort of thing of like, oh, I didn't realize we could do this. I didn't realize this could be this, you know? Like, I think that's very, I think that's awesome. Like, it's it's so fun to see, even though, like, so much of this is, like, very clearly done on, like, uh, green screens and shit like that. Yeah, Um, yeah. Which, you know, some of it is probably COVID, but 
Other times, I think it was like a little... You could see it a little bit with this one, a little too much, mm-hmm. but you know, I'll 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 leave that behind. Overall, I really liked yeah. this movie. I, th- I thought yeah. it was, I thought it was great. I mean, it wasn't like you know, uh, no. I I would say it, it's like you know, we did this little thought experiment last year or earlier this year, of like, oh, what's the like essential MCU canon? I not not to like get ahead of ourselves, but like I think this one's in it. I think this is mm-hmm. like very much like top tier. Mm-hmm. I don't know how super important it is to the rest of the story. I actually think it probably will be significant because this is the first time we've really, as a movie, gone into the mm-hmm. multiverse. Plus, um, now everyone doesn't know who Spider-Man is. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Well, doesn't know who Peter so, Parker yeah. is. They know they who know Spider-Man, Spider-Man is. Nobody they don't know who Peter, Peter Parker. Parker is. Right. So it's kind of... It's, it's interesting that... Not to jump ahead ahead, but the end of this movie is essentially like him moving out. He's done with school and whatnot. It's kind of like how Spider-Man, the original was like how it like kind of ended. It's like, all right, end of the first chapter. And it's weird that that's kind of where we are. Cause I know that they've been talking, there's going to be a new Spider-Man trilogy. Mm-hmm. He'll be in other movies. And based on, these movies yeah i kind of do want another trilogy and now like you're kind of starting over at scratch with nobody knowing who's peter parker he has no ties to anyone anymore other than spider-man so it yeah there's a an interesting story there i I want to see him reconnect with mj and ned yeah like it's weird that like now you know after this movie i'm like oh mj and and Peter, like, I uh, kind of care for them now. Like, that, it's weird that, that it's that kind of power couple I've actually become invested in. Uh, I mean, they're great. I mean, obviously, they're in, in real life, right? Yeah. Those two. Okay. Sort of thing. They're, they're, the, <laughs> I think. No, yeah. they, they are. They. Let's go to, let's go to gossip correspondent, <laughs> Sam. Uh, <laughs> but no, obviously, they have, like, incredible chemistry. And it's like all of them. Like, you see the friends, like, even, uh. What was his name? Flash or whatever. The one yeah, Tony Flash Reed, Thompson. Reed plays. Who's yeah. Like, just like literally in it to always be a punchline, which <laughs> yeah. like, all right, sure. Um, but no, I, I, I just, I find like the characters and the casting on this to be like very mm. good, mm-hmm. you know? And like, I think the more I see the Marvel movies too, like I realize it's just part of it is just like the casting can be like very, very strong. And like yeah. Tom Holland is like perfect in this movie, yes. you know? Um, it's not, yeah. I mean like it's perfectly casted and like, he seems like a kid too. Like even, yeah. you know, he's approaching his late twenties and he still seems right. like a kid. Like he can play Spider-Man for the next 10 years. Honestly. <laughs> <laughs> and it still seemed like he's like, you know, he could just be getting out of college by that point. Mm. Um, but I'm, I'm interested to see where it goes. I don't know if I'm like, I need to see three more movies, but I think it's definitely a story that um, is far from over. Oh, yeah. Mm-hmm. You know? I don't. The only thing is, like, I've heard he's not super game to keep making these. He doesn't want to be but, old and being Spider-Man. Okay. That, that's, the, like, the, the most I've heard. So he's, like, out after, after like, 34, 35. Yeah, yeah. Right. Yeah, I've, heard, I've uh, heard mixed things where it's, like, I've heard, like, yeah, he doesn't want to be old Spider-Man, but I've also heard him say, like, I kind of want to make these movies forever. Yeah. But, but uh, so, uh, there, was, there was just one part of this that I got a really big kick out of, and that's how they basically made Andrew Garfield the pathetic Spider-Man. <laughs> Cause it's, Cause true. it's true. I just like, like one was like, Oh yeah, I fought an alien once. And he was like, Oh yeah, I fought an alien too. He was like purple and he like destroyed half the universe. He's like, I fought a Russian guy in a, in a rhino suit. And, and I love how they keep bringing back how stupid Electro's origin story is. Yeah. How he fell in a vat of electric eels. And they're like, huh. <laughs> okay. But so I, Say, John, I know you 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 walked out of the first Amazing Spider-Man movie with Andrew Garfield to um, go see Magic Mike. Yes, yes. I wasn't going to bring that part up, but yes, you saw Magic Mike. I'll just say this: 
one of those movies is getting a third sequel. One of them only had, or a second sequel. Only one, and the other one had one. All so right. you know, um, who's who's the real winner? Anyways, um, so Sam and I coming twenty twenty two. I think. Anyway, so. sorry. Sam and I have seen all. I was was now eight Spider Man movies. Yeah. Um, definitely, the the worst of them are Amazing Spider Man and Amazing Spider Man Two, just horribly done. But the one thing this mu- movie that No Way Home has made me realize is um, kind of really wish we had gotten some good Andrew Garfield. Yeah, he's the, he's the strongest part of those movies. Oh, he is so like in this movie. He's so funny. He's great. He's, he's a great witty. Actor. Like, it was, it was like, just such a way we missed out on that. Yeah, yeah, it's like I and I felt that at oh. the time. Where I'm like, he's really good at yeah. this. Yeah, because I remember watching the first one and you and I agreeing like, oh, he's a great Peter Parker. Mm. It's just the story kind of sucks. And then the second one happened and they wasted Paul Giamatti. (laughs) Uh, Yeah. Tragic. But uh, like even like Jamie Foxx is a great actor. And in Amazing Spider-Man 2, Electro was awful. Mm. He mm. horrible origin so, story. So can we just say character. this? If you're just yes. having Jamie Foxx in your kind of, he's not exactly playing a complicated role. Just let him be Jamie Foxx. Yeah, which I feel like they did yeah. here. Did they yeah. like? They totally were like Jamie Foxx. Just be you. Just ignore Amazing Spider Man Two. Just be you. And I was like, like th- this whole time, I was like, this is Electro. This is the Electro I wanted. That's actually a better version of Electro. Oh, yeah. yeah. And, like, the, I, awesome. I love that, like, when I, I mentioned it about the trailer, but when he has the electricity going through him and he has, like, this for a second, he has the spiked mask, like, split second and you miss it. That's, like, if you look at his comic uh, outfit, he's got this weird, like, spiked mask, like, yellow spiked mm. mask. And it's, like, a blink and you'll miss it kind of, like, glimpse at it in the this movie and, oh, and that's so all great. you have to do to tie in like yeah you don't have because it's a it's a ridiculous yeah, costume I mean. in the comics let's be honest so but like they, they were able to do that and um other like cool thing is how uh william willem defoe's green goblin looked more comic book like with the purple sweater and everything <laughs> and the green like he was the those were the green goblin's colors like and he was like riding on the the glider like that was great i like little things like that that were just perfect where they they fixed an issue with the like i wouldn't say issue but like, fix something from the the previous movies that these guys were in and i i think having willem defoe i you he was definitely I mean, he's a perfect little, yeah. as a comic book act as a comic oh, yeah. book villain especially like, this character yeah. it's, yeah, and it was nice having him back because I feel like when the first movie came out, he wasn't fully understanding of the role, but now he does, and he was able to turn it up to eleven. I mean, I think the first Spider Man is tr- like it's not it's not necessarily a comic book movie as we know them now, right? You know, like the still trying to like figure out a lot of things, but now that he can like be kind of like hammy and stuff. Mm -hmm. Hammy's not exactly the best word, but you know, really like play up like, Oh, I'm a comic book villain. Cause it's literally what I am in this character. Mm. Um, And and plus the, the first one, especially those first three, that was kind of in the era when comic book movies and superhero movies, everyone felt that they had to be campy. Mm. Yeah, they had to be campy, but they had to be realistic as much as possible. Like a weird mix of campy and realistic, because like yeah, right. Because like the reason why Tobey Maguire has the organic spider web, which comes up in this movie, <laughs> is because yeah, which is because Sam Raimi believed that the audience wouldn't believe that he could develop his own spider webs and his own web shooters as a as a smart person. Like he couldn't do that, so he made him have them organic which, which is great that it comes I up just, in this movie i just love that like unnecessarily long scene of the three spider-men just talking to each other on the statue of liberty mm-hmm. okay so my 
I found like to me this movie was I, I uh, my subtitle for this was Spider Man. It's okay to not be okay. <laughs> Did you guys find that like? An element between, like, they're having this sort of, like, self-help, you know, uh, group therapy session, and then, like, you know, the whole sort of motive for Spider-Man to, like, not kill these guys, but to send them back better than they were. Like, it just had a very interesting message to me that, like, they sort of pull at, and then not really, you know, like, th- there's, there's a lot going on in this movie, and it's already two and a half hours long, but... <laughs> There's a lot of times when you think like, oh, this would be interesting to kind of, you know, expound upon, but they really don't have time mm. for it. Mm-hmm. But I just found it so so interesting that like, you know, and this movie obviously was written long before, I mean, I guess what? It was probably shot during COVID, yeah. right? But I think um, so. Just after the last two years for kind of having, like, a Spider-Man movie that, like, hugs you, you know, <laughs> with, like, bringing in all these, like, familiar okay, faces God. and we're all going to talk it out and, like, make ourselves you know, better, you know? Like, you we're going to cure Doc ourselves Hawk. instead of defeating Doc each Hawk other. at his core is a good guy. So, you know, it was the yeah. tentacles that made that, him evil. That's true. But, like, that, they bring that up in, ama- in Spider-Man 2. Like, and, when, and when he, like, he fixes him up. I got touched a little. <laughs> yeah. Let me let me ask you guys. Um, the stuff with Defoe, like, you know, in the second act, is that the Green Goblin? Is that him being, like, the, is that the long con, or does it actually, like, just switch between the two? Like, he's, like, you know, Dr. Jekyll and Mr. Hyde. Dr. Yeah. Jekyll and Mr. Hyde. I mean, yeah. like, yeah. to get deep into it, uh, is he's kind <laughs> of the opposite of, of um, Doc Ock. Where Doc Ock's a good mm. man, but it's the tentacles that are making him bad. Whereas the Green Goblin kind of is who he really is. That's kind of who yeah. Osborn right. is, and it just is coming out like that. Mm. It's his what his yeah. id. So, yeah, just able to manifest in a character. Um, yeah, uh, like I just this the the cast was great. I I was very ha- like. I feel like Rice, uh, uh, was it Iphens, Iphens, the guy who, Reese yeah, yeah, he was the only one who Get just, the like, Flash! Yeah. <laughs> which is more right. or less the same movie, to be honest, <laughs> if, who are we kidding? But like, um, he, like, he's the only one of the villains, I guess you would say from the original, uh, Spider-Man movies that just like, they're just like, just get in the truck. Yeah. <laughs> Get in the truck. We're, we're not gonna um, we're not gonna deal with you at all because you're just a lost cause. Well, <laughs> yeah, but also I think it's like you know, how many storylines can we possibly oh, I know. pack in oh, here? I know. You know, yeah. like even like Electro is very like half baked. Like Doc Ock, you well, know, actually sort of has an arc. I mean, Sandman doesn't at all. Like, no, I, I don't. I'm the, not the sure. One, I'm not sure on the Sandman. one. The one kind of fault I have here is like never really understanding what side of things Sandman's on. Yeah. Agreed. And because he's ways, like, I just want to go home and see my daughter. Problem in Spider-Man Three. In the <laughs> third one, like, yeah. yeah. What's the deal with this guy? Is he bad? Is he good? He killed Uncle Ben, yeah. but then they're like, I but like, it was my by accident, and he felt bad. Yeah, like, I, I, yeah, I. He's the my my only flaw with this movie, honestly, is. Um, Thomas Hayden Church is Sandman. Like, he looked great. I loved him, like, for the most part, but not quite sure how he went from, I just want to go home and see my daughter, to, I don't want to go home and see my daughter. Yeah. I mean, truthfully, it's not a big part of the movie, so it doesn't yeah. matter that much. Right. But it is. it, it does sort of stand out. Yeah. Um, I mean, you know, look. At the end of the day, I think the big appeal is the three Spider Men, and yep. I, yep. I I thought yeah. all that was great. I, I love seeing Tobey Maguire back, yep. like doing this kind of Them stuff, cracking each other's um, backs. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. And like you said, Sam, like just I think you to- it totally comes through here how like Andrew Garfield is definitely like under you or you know never really got the accolades he probably should have yeah. considering like how bad and those just, movies I were. I really enjoy it's just one second, but when they're like okay. Spider-Man 1, uh, Spider-Man 2, and Spider-Man 3, and Andrew Gar- Garfield's just like, yeah, okay, yeah. <laughs> I just enjoyed that. <laughs> I, I do love that how he was like, I've been on a team. I've been in the Avengers. Oh, that's awesome. 
<laughs> Who are the Avengers? <laughs> are they a band? Are you in a rock band? <laughs> Yeah, like uh, just the interaction of the three of them they really was good so great. And and yeah. to be fair too, if you if that's like a little bit off, mm. it could be really like eye rolling yeah. and like oh yeah. yeah, like you give like Joss Weed in that and it's like <laughs> oh my god, like so I mean hats off for, to them for you know. As crazy as a you know stunt that is mm. to pull it off is still like a you know, yeah. cool and, achievement. And, and, and yeah, hats off to John Watts. He's done all three of the Spider-Man, yeah. uh, the Tom Holland Spider-Man. They've all been good. Yeah, they have. Mm. It's interesting too because this was the first one. Like the first two had pretty like low stakes, mm. I would say. Mm-hmm. Um, this one. Slightly more, although it's you know, yeah, I, I'd say it's slightly more. So it starts to depart a little bit, and then you know, like I said too, there's a lot going on here. Like the whole like you know, forgetting people, forgetting who you are. I think that scene at the end is like really good. Mm-hmm. Um, when you know when he goes to the the um to the donut shop. Um, but there's even some stuff there, and you know maybe. Maybe this kind of comes out more in, in subsequent movies, but uh, you know that would that's kind of a cool thing that they sort of didn't explore, and I think it's like a little bit you know regret because I, th- I think there's like serious you know granted like that's not really what these movies are mm-hmm. ever, but like I think it'd be cool to see you know cool to that explore might be more, that uh, um, but, TV show land yeah. That's, that's something that could probably go down that way. But then that's a whole other can of worms between Sony and Disney. Yeah. Mm. So Plus, like, Tom Holland's yeah, doing that the TV show. <laughs> yeah. Um, Got all that so uncharted money. Really? Really? Oh, God. You mean Chris's new favorite movie? Uh, I don't know why he talks that movie up so much. Anyways, uh, during the finale when Doctor Strange is closing the portals, I guess you would say, or the cracks in the dimensions, um, you see a lot of people, or at least the silhouettes of a lot of people. I saw there. Rhino. Sam, did you recognize any? Saw Rhino. There was one that I saw. It took me a second to get it, where I looked at it and I was like, that looked like a flamingo's head. I was like, a flamingo's head? Who the hell looks like? There's no flamingo. Oh, scorpion, and like, it, it like it just like clicked, and it took me a second. But yeah, so scorpion is in there. He, like, um, people gone back rewatched it, and Rhino obviously he's so obvious to mm-hmm. tell. Um, scorpion is yes, he's one of them because you see the tail. Um, but people have said they've seen like Craven the Hunter in there, who is supposed to get his own movie. Um, You've also got, um, oh God, I'm trying to think of all the others that are in there. I think people have claimed like they've seen Black Cat and stuff like that, but like, eh. There's, there's, I was waiting for like Kang to come through or something. I know. Part of me was like waiting for like the bigger picture, maybe some tentacles coming through. Uh, and the only thing I find a little, and you know, they've got a whole movie to like dig themselves out of this hole, mm-hmm. but the fact that like, Oh, we shut the multiverse, and then the next movie. No, wait, never mind. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, they they mentioned that like we know very little about the multiverse, and so we believe that we shut it, but not quite sure. So we'll we'll mm-hmm. they'll get into that I think a little bit more in uh, in Doctor Strange too. Uh, I I do hope long term they don't just like wave their hand to like the whole Peter Parker people forget him. Mm-hmm. Even though I feel like they might, All right. like I don't know, maybe that's a Doctor Strange trick, and I don't know. Have they announced an- another Avengers or like any kind of like no. team up movies on the, the docket? Only thing no. close to that is Secret Invasion. Yeah, which yeah. is TV. Yeah. Which could be Spider Man. <laughs> right, which watch he's in that after I just said Tom Holland. <laughs> I know. I I feel like Marvel TV is different than TV TV. Right. Also, a lot of these guys just, like, you know, shows up for, like, three seconds. I mean, look right. at 
uh, Florence Pugh and, and Hawkeye. I mean, she's probably just like on a green screen in London. Dude. Well, I've, I, I've, have, have really, you watched but... the last two episodes? I have not watched the most recent, the one that dropped. So today is Wednesday, so I have not had a chance to yeah, watch today. Because she, she's in a lot of the last two episodes. Yeah. Yeah. No, I, I know yeah. it's not just a cameo. Like, she's actually in the show, yeah. um, which I've yet to and check that, out. But I'll just say this. Definitely like, will. Pretty good finale. Okay. Watch it today. Pretty Cannot good wait to watch that. Um, one thing that has come out of this movie that we didn't touch upon at all. It, it granted, it's a passing comment, but like I feel like means should mean more in the grand scheme of thing. Kind of makes more sense. Is that Benedict Wong's character is now the Sorcerer Supreme? Because he wanted. Got I don't it. even know what that is, though. To be honest, the Sorcerer Supreme is like the head wizard guy, the guy in charge kind of thing, and because. Um, uh, Doctor Strange blipped during the blip. He took he took over the mantle as like the head wizard, I guess you would say, because mm-hmm. he was gone for five years. So, which might make more sense now that Benedict Wong has been showing up in like yeah, everything. I was like sitting there thinking like, man, Benedict Wong just has a lot of time on his hand. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he's not saying no to TV. Yeah. That's for sure. No. I mean, he was. Does he, does he show up in, in? Don't tell me if he does. But <laughs> he he is in an episode of um, What We Do in the Shadows, which is great with Haley Joel Osment uh, as his character in this. No, 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 no. You know he's British too. I yes. have no idea. Yep. Yeah, it's weird. Um, so it's like the three of them. You know him, Cumby, and uh, Tom Holland just all talking, not in the real <laughs> accents. Yeah. Very weird. Andrew Garfield's. Yeah, it was, a, it was yeah. a little weird to think that uh, two out of the three Spider Men are British. Yeah. I feel like you could hear it coming through yeah, a little Garfield, bit. Yeah, Garfield, it was like, though. oh, you, you haven't done this in a while. Okay. <laughs> yeah. I, and I noticed it. I don't think I've ever really noticed it in other roles he's had, but mm-hmm. I noticed it here. A little, just a little bit coming through. Mm-hmm. When he gets excited, the boy, you know, <laughs> which, the, the full English comes out. So. You know, you know what's a nice uh, little like uh, like toss up is when Electro is talking to Andrew Garfield after he loses his energy, and he's like, you know, young boy from Brooklyn fighting with that. And he's like, Ki- yeah, Queen, sorry. And he's like, kind of thought you were black. And he's like, there's there's a black Spider Man out there, right? And he's like, yeah, I I I, I think so. And it's like, ah, Miles Morales. Well, I just like that because it was just another scene where they're just dunking on Andrew Garfield. <laughs> it's yeah. like, yeah, you're disappointing. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you disappointed everyone, like, but I kind of want him to come back. I want him to be back in as Spider Man yeah, again, can... but in a good. I movie. did. I did really enjoy all the stuff in the beginning where they're just, um, you know, figuring out what the hell's going on. Mm-hmm. Like, I really, of being like, oh, I know him, though, but I don't know him. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Even then, it's like, you know, they're just like, start with the lizard in the cage. They don't even know. Yeah, right. It's almost funny going back being like him just like being hilariously not in the movie. <laughs> like, he's like stuck in the truck just like the, the shark is in Suicide <laughs> yeah. Squad. Yep. Yeah, it's the same kind of thing. Like, it's this character where they were like, eh, it's not even worth trying to get into him. Like, just leave Listen, him in the he's truck. a big lizard. They mentioned we all that. Get like, it. He, <laughs> he's a big lizard who wants to turn everybody else into a lizard's people for some reason. Actually, ch- two second diversion. Did you guys see the trailer for that? For Peacemaker? Oh, no, I haven't seen the no, trailer for that. I have yeah. not. That comes Wait, no, out no, next I month, right? did. Yeah. I forget. It's not really that memorable. Oh yeah. Okay. Now yeah. Now that you mentioned that it's not very memorable, I'm starting like, to remember. I think it. I did see that trailer. <laughs> it looked where like he's fighting yeah. in his underwear a lot. Like it looked all right. Yeah, and you know this might have been the second one. I don't even know. Uh, I don't know. But we'll check it out. Yeah. I mean, it's on HBO Plus or Max, so who cares? Um, but yeah, with this uh, last last cameo. Cameo number four, I didn't forget. Uh, uh, Tom Hardy shows up at the very end for the post credit or mid credit scene as um, Eddie Brock and Venom, and is just kind of like trying to figure out 
what the hell's going on because there's so many super powered people in this universe universe. And then he gets blipped back to his universe, but leaves a little bit of the venom goo on the table, setting up venom being in the MCU. Which like now I'm just yeah. sitting here trying to figure out what the hell Sony's trying to do. <laughs> Cause yeah. Cause like, I, th- I thought they were going to have like the <sighs> venom verse where it was like, Kinda in the MCU, but not really. Right. Where like so in the Venom verse, it's like there are Venom symbiotes in all the multiverse, and each one, like th- I mean, there's literally a comic, like a- overarching thing where they all get together because each one didn't just go after Spider-Man. They each went off at like connected to somebody else, like Wolverine, Doctor Strange. Groot, Rocket Raccoon, like, they attach to someone random. So there's all these Venoms, but the the symbiote enhances your abilities. And so, like, you have all these super-powered Venom things. And I thought when they were pulling in Tom Hardy that they were going to be like, now Tom Hardy is in this universe. And part of me was like, I will accept that. I will accept Tom Hardy as Eddie Brock in the MCU because I feel like the character will be treated better than what he's been treated in those two uh, standalone movies. And no, they didn't. And they blipped him back to his universe of sadness. And now that means Morbius is, uh, Morbius is not in the MCU. And even though, but vultures, vultures there. there. We have those like murals of Spider-Man with like murder Spider-Man. On. Right. So like, I don't understand what Sony's doing. What, what is, do you mean? So these are all Sony movies. So Sony, right. Sony's been since Andrew Garfield, Sony's been planning to do an expanded Spider-Man universe, get into the sinister six introduce all these Cause, villains cause when they got, in their own when standalone they bought movies. The, the Spider-Man movie contract, like they got a ton of characters. Yeah, they got them. Look, there was, there was a period in, was it the nineties that Marvel wasn't doing well, the comics. So they just sell, sold their, all their properties to everyone that wanted something. That's why right. X-Men went to Fox. Sony got Spider-Man, blah, blah, blah. And also, I mean, the reason why they made the Andrew Garfield, to keep the contract is that, you know they had yep. right. They had to make keep making movies, or else it would lapse back to to Marvel. Right. Um, which is why I sort of refused to see those because I knew they were <laughs> they weren't made with love. That's for sure. <laughs> um, and I think that bore out. But it's crazy to me they have this like, oh, now that this is actually all huge again, you know, let's just make as many of these fucking movies as we can. Yeah. Um, because isn't it like everyone in this movie is more or less the Sinister Six? Yeah. Yep. So, so. you know, I don't know if they'll do that. You know, I, it seems like they there's no reason why they wouldn't. Um, I mean, th- they do good, right? Like, Venom's made a shitload of money. These the Spider-Man. first one. Oh, let's, um, oh, the first, well, yeah. Oh, you want to get into numbers really quick? Yeah. It's weird not um, having Chris here. I guess the box office is back for yeah, this. Right. Um, only back, this, <laughs> right? For exactly the biggest asterisk um, humanly imaginable. So, Spider-Man: No Way Home um, is the third or second biggest domestic weekend opening yeah. ever. Not pandemic ever, ever. and. I'm just totally blown away by that. I mean, we went to a Monday night showing, which first off, every theater, which I mean, is more or less every theater. Uh, I was going to say every theater this is in, but every, it, you know, every theater. Um, this is playing like, what, like 15 times a day for a two and 40 minute movie, two and a half hour movie, which is crazy. Mm. It's on like half of the screens and it's just raking it. I mean, we were trying to get tickets and it was, like, impossible mm. on a Monday night, you know? And this wasn't a, like, half-sold, you know, intentionally half or three-quarter sold theater. Um, that's wild, man. I can't believe people came out for Spider-Man and, so, like, just didn't for some other things. So we went out on Monday. So, I, I like, I just went to 
the numbers, which has all the the numbers. This movie. Oh, it was like the second best Monday ever. Uh, it was the third Two. best Ma uh, Tuesday ever. Tuesday. The only movies that have beaten it: Avengers: Endgame and The Force Awakens. Like, yeah, that's insane. Like how? Like that's how? Like how did this movie? do so well it makes I mean, no it's sense really good because movie, it, it shouldn't but have like at the same time i it's agree like, but pandemic <laughs> but the pandemic like i don't know maybe this is just everybody was like we're gonna see one movie this year let's make it spider-man <laughs> like i guess so but it's just you know crazy to me too with everything that's gone on with you know the sort of cases going back up and some people sort of slipping into this mentality of you know 2020 like definitely not you know how people were sort of thinking over the summer or at least before you know the numbers sort of crop up again but even in the fall i mean people have been very chill out um I, i'm just shocked I'm, I'm shocked that like this did that well and like i look at something like fast and furious that like greatly mm. underperformed yeah you know, and like it's, maybe I, I think what it is is that, you know, one is very much like ride or die. The other is a very like casual, like pretty interested, but not like I'm going to risk my life <laughs> or whatever. You know, like, you know, I, I can just watch it on TV or I'll just wait yeah. until it's streaming um, with like fast. But I mean, that's a huge I, I, I'm pointing that one out because like a lot of the other Marvel movies have been, you know, Black Widow, Shang Chi, Eternal. Um, yeah. yeah, I mean, like it's it's weird because I, I think we were talking and we were walking out. It's like, you know, the last movie we sort of saw, the last Marvel movie that you know was that we saw in theater. Well, actually, not yeah. Sean because a lot of us on this <laughs> unfortunately saw Eternals. But you know, it just feels like it's weird that like Spider Man was the last real Marvel movie. Yeah. And now it's like the most recent one. Like it's, yeah. it doesn't make sense. It, how that's it was possible. the last Marvel movie I saw in theaters because I didn't go see the Eternals. So like, it's weird that two, two years ago. Yeah. Two years ago, I saw my last Marvel movie that it's cause it was 2019 that it came out. Right. Mm -hmm. So like, that, that's crazy. right after Endgame. Yeah. Like that's, that's, it's crazy that that's the case but i mean i i think not just disney but definitely sony realized how they can put asses in the seat and that <laughs> is to hint at bringing back toby Maguire and andrew garfield in a movie and tying three franchises together and like not come out and say that that's what they're doing and I, there was just so much buzz for this movie that it was going to be a success, success no matter what. It just, yeah. it still is just surprising that it's this much of a success, and that makes me so happy that like, once again, like Marvel, you can make good movies. Like, it, it doesn't have to be you know, the cookie cutter kind of like. This is the story, and uh, there's a big fu a CGI fight at the end, and then we're done. And oh, you got to wait for the post credit because that's going to set something huge up. Like, as a Venom fan, this post credit or mid credit scene was great, but like compared to post credit scenes of the past, it's gotten to the point for Marvel where the post credit scene is the movie. That's what you have to see because it mm. sets up something even bigger. This one is just kind of very vague and kind of silly. And then boop, it's over. It's like, oh, Venom. Now there's a chance Venom's going to show up in a later movie. And that I love that because the, you got what you needed out of this movie to be excited for future movies. You didn't need that post credit scene and I'm so happy that the post credit scene was a trailer. Yeah, that's, that was a nice like refreshing change. Yeah. It's like the only time that has happened was was at the end of Captain America the first event. Right, yeah, that was uh, the Avengers trailer. The Avengers for trailer. For Thor, right? No. Oh no, for the Avengers. Yeah. So you got the Avengers trailer right after that movie, which was amazing cuz you're like, "Oh my god, this is actually happening." So like I'm okay with the post credit being the trailer for the next movie or like a next movie or whatever, like mm -hmm. that we haven't seen yet. That, that, that's kind of fun. The mid credit scenes, like they don't really need to set up too too much. 
I mean, that they, they, that they're exactly what they are. Mid credit scenes, like mm. it just kind of shawarma is a great one. Like, plus I feel like eighty percent of this movie was already a mid credit scene. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, you know, like you can only do so much. <laughs> The big weird reveal slash cameo, yeah, yeah. you know. Yeah, because like imagine like imagine it where like the movie happens and then the mid credit scene is like Andrew Garfield. Yeah, show. that that would. And it's like oh, in the next down movie, where it'd be like oh, you know? so that that's all yeah. the Andrew Garfield I get. <laughs> yeah, I want more. Damn it! <laughs> like I was very happy that um, what's his face? Uh, John J. Jameson or yeah, J. Jonah J. Jameson. Yeah. Uh, that like he, God, I can't think of his name. I know, J.K. Simmons. Yes, but like he's such a more major role in this movie than he was in, you know, um, Far From Home, which he was just a cameo, and they didn't say that he was going to be in it. They they never even hinted at it, but it was like, oh my God, he's like, he's in this movie. That's great. Granted, it was a mm-hmm. post credit scene, but like still, it was like, oh, that's great. I was so happy that he had such a major role in this movie. Did you guys... um, Was the only thing we were supposed to read into his, like, you know... Like, he goes from being, like, a, you know, like, a at-home Alex Jones with, like, a green screen background and, Mm -hmm. like, the only thing to, like, a major, you know, in-studio thing and... That was supposed to just be because he's more yeah. popular, right? Correct. That's not like yeah. the multiverse yeah. fucking No, thing, no. Right? Like, yeah. Okay, all right. Yeah. Because, I mean, I feel like that's a that's a trick that happens in that kind of circumstance. You right, know? right. But, yeah, no, it's just it, he was gaining more popularity by calling Spider-Man a murderer. And there was obviously a fro- following uh, with the whole Mysterio is right. And there was that great... Um, scene in the school with his teachers uh, where Hannibal Bress is just like the whole time like Mysterio's right and I was like just like laughing at him the whole time uh, those yeah or I mean him being in there even like I mean I forget that like those three guys are right yeah it's and they just like show up for three seconds and it's like <laughs> okay cool guys yeah. see you later like I totally forgot it was even Hannibal Barres like I mean I was like oh wait because I think he might have like lost yeah. some weight or something too mm. but um and he, he, <laughs> yeah, what, he is he's in the, the first one yeah he's the second one too one when he's like he's showing the uh, Captain America's uh, <laughs> like promotion like school video. And he just stops it and he's just like, yeah, yeah, I'm pretty sure this guy's a war criminal now. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, like those three, those three, the teachers slash principal or whatever and gym teacher, like they're, they're great characters and I'm happy that they still have them in these movies. But it seems like now that Spider-Man's done with high school, we're done with those three characters, which is a shame, but mm. Also, like, in what world do you not get into other colleges, but then you're like, oh, maybe I'll get into <laughs> MIT. Right. Yeah. In what world? Yeah, it would be, MIT would be the first one, like, no. And it's like, all right, well, we have all these fallback schools. So. Oh, you mean literally the hardest school to get into? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Or at least it was it, when, when I was the, applying. The, not that I was applying to MIT. But, but like, that that whole sequence should have been reversed, where it starts with MIT. All right, we're not going into MIT. All right, well, let's, you know, we always have our fallbacks, and they just get rejected by the fallbacks. Yeah, but it doesn't, it doesn't know, have it doesn't the same hit. effect when, it, like, the Rensselaer, yeah. you know, fucking dean of admissions gets caught in a car because <laughs> the, you know, Green Goblin is throwing grenades <laughs> or whatever. You know, it's got to gotta be what it's got to be. Yeah. So... All right. Well, well, well. Do we have any final thoughts? <laughs> any final thoughts on this movie? I mean, no. The only thought is they should make more movies like this. Like, not, and maybe I'll regret saying that four years from now. But like, I like this kind of feel to like a Marvel movie. And maybe like all of them can't be this, and like that's fine too. But. There's just something about it that, like, brings out this, like... And someone who's not super... Obviously not super into Marvel. Um, like, I don't have this, like, reverence for it going back to, like, childhood, you know. It, it brings out this, like, child, like, like, oh, man, what is this? You know, like, it's yeah. just... I don't know. You just kind of, like, smile and, and at it. it also you know? makes you... 
it's it's a good payoff after all the hours you've committed to this <laughs> this uh, right. universe <laughs> where you're just all like, all eight movies. Like, oh yay! Mm. I can actually, but like not only Spider Man, but like the MCU also, where it's like. Oh yeah, you get yeah. Doctor Strange mm-hmm. shows up, and you're like, "Yeah, I remember you from the other movies." Hey, Charlie Cox is here. I watched your TV shows and then stopped watching when you got canceled. Now that he's back, I guess I gotta finish season three. Do they bring back Iron Fist? That's the no, real no. Finn Jones is done. No one wants Finn Jones back. Not even Finn Jones. So, um, we gonna rate. This. I'm gonna give yes. I'm going to give this movie an 8.7. Okay, Sam? You know, I'm going to give it an 8.7, too. That's a good score for this. Guys, you're not going to believe this. I feel like a magician. I wrote my score in before we started. It's an 8.7. Oh, wow. (laughs) Damn. So this is an 8.7 movie, uh, which is like a good movie. Like, could it have been better? I mean, it's a superhero movie. It's it's tough to get, like, better. Some have. Usually it has to be mm. more of a drama. Um, but, like, this is a really good superhero movie. And it just, like you said, Sam, it, it's like it, it congratulates you for spending so much time with all yeah. these properties. It's like, good for yeah. you. Yeah. I mean, the only downside to this and making the kind of movies I'm saying we should make or they should make more of or more elements of is you literally you get the most out of it because you've watched the previous yeah. 40 mm. movies. Like, uh, and that kind of makes it a little yeah. less approachable. So, John, the, the closest thing that we can get to this movie that's, go- that's happening is The Flash where we've got the callback to yeah. Michael Keaton being Batman, but we also do have Ben Affleck coming back as Batman. So we just need Christian Bale, maybe, you know, George Clooney, um, <laughs> Val Kilmer maybe. What's Val Kilmer doing? Uh, he, like, really? I, other than the fact that he can't talk anymore. It didn't stop him in the, the snowman. the cancer. Oh, my God. <laughs> Sam, don't. Don't don't remind us about that J.K. Simmons catastrophe. Yeah. Oh God, that's right. He was the he's... only one with an accent in the whole damn movie. No, he's Is the he mayor. The killer? No, he's I the don't mayor remember of like, who... the city, and like no, he... he has like one. Was scene, he a mayor? And I forget what it is, and he's angry at somebody about something. He's. I thought he was the killer. No, he's not the killer, but he's trafficking um, girls. Like oh, but he's trade. a bad yeah, dude. He's a bad guy. Oh, I think God. the. There was a cop that was the killer. I don't yeah. remember. And like part of me is like, I feel like no. I need to rewatch it. But I was like, that was a bad movie. But like maybe it was so bad I would enjoy no, it the second time. It's through. not even no. I, Let's I'm, go watch the lighthouse. Oh, I know. There's so many movies that I could would actually enjoy. Fun watching fact over uh, the snowman. The uh, mermaid, J.K. Simmons. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I was waiting for uh for uh what's his face to just like just start <laughs> shouting like he's in the lighthouse in this movie too. Oh Defoe. Defoe. <laughs> yeah. What that makes a man great. want to be a Spider Man? <laughs> <laughs> you like my goblin <laughs> <laughs> Oh man. Alright. Well on that note <laughs> Uh, you can find of all, all of our podcasts online on Podbean, Stitcher, blah, blah, blah. You can find us at facebook.com slash Knights of Nerditude. Leave us a review. Send us a message if there's anything you want us to check out, anything you want us to watch and review. Let us know. We will gladly uh, watch whatever it is that you want us to watch. Until next also, time. Also, oh. Oh, so what? Also what? I, I, we're going to have a segment next time of uh, stuff we've watched that we haven't talked about this year. Okay. So it'll be, it'll be a fun episode. Yeah. Sorry. All right. Bye. Until next time. <laughs>